Good morning, everyone. Today, we will be playing Mono Green Tron again. I got a request to try some Thought Knot Seers in Mono Green Tron. So I dropped a Thrag Tusk out of the main board. I dropped a Worm Coil out of the main board and added two Thought Knot Seers. Um, I dropped Weather the Storm from the sideboard, well, just one, and added Worm Coil to the side and then dropped uh, the Thrag Tusk completely. So we're gonna see how this goes. Um, I'm debating about adding a Wastes to the main board because we get Blood Mooned, this is gonna be a problem. Um, but I, the only thing I could do is cut Relic for a, a Wastes or like a Maze Mind Tome or something. Um, I'm not sure I wanna do that because I like having the single Relic in the main. You know what? Let's do it. I don't. I, I really do not want to get uh, just obliterated by Blood Moon. So add the wastes, and we'll take this into a constructed league. Oh shoot! <laughs> well, that's about to go on. Um, I might. Uh, I might queue up for that because I need to use these entry points. So let's go ahead and play. Uh, we'll play a match with. Uh, this deck and then I'm gonna stop recording so I can get that done. Man, I'm glad I recorded in advance because today the uh, first Vintage Cube video of the series goes up. I just got that all situated. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If you, I have like 45 old Vintage Cube videos or 44 of them. Do you guys think it would be worth going back and remastering them like with the editing style so that there's not so much uh, blank space in them? I think that'd be interesting, let me know. Um, one Tron land and a Sylvan Scrying, two stars. I'm going to five. Mmm, alright. Let's do it. Put back Maze Mind Tome and Ancient Stirrings. Opponent starts Leyline of Sanctity, okay. This is probably Oops All Spells then. Alright, my opponent played an Ameria Shattered Skyclave. So we're going to crack star for green, ancient stirrings, try and find a tower. We did not find a tower. Take chromatic sphere, press to the bottom, play power plant and sphere. Pass the turn. We got a couple of draws to try and land Karn. Um, sack star for green, play star. Sack star for green, play star. Play sanctum. Sack star for green. Draw tower. Perfect. Okay, next turn. Next turn, we're golden. Our opponent has to kill us this turn, which means they need, I think, probably double Simeon Spirit Guide. Or like a Ritual or something. I don't think they run Rituals, though. They discard Avenge Vine. We draw Blast Zone. Players is mine. Or Players is Tower, I mean. Play Karn. Sack Sanctum of Ugin. We could actually go get Thought Knot Seer here. Why don't we go do that? Play Karn. New Camaria. Pass the turn. Next turn we can play Karn and Thought Knot Seer if I down tick to uh, kill Leyline. If they don't play a land, I'm gonna up tick and hit a land, hit my own land out of my hand. All right, we got there. Um, hmm. I'm gonna bring in the Wilts and I think the Veils. We're gonna drop Dismember um, and Ulamog, and my gut is telling me to drop. The Thought Knots. Yeah, I'm going to drop the Thought Knots and the Wastes. Oop, not the Urza's Tower. That would be a huge mistake. We'll drop the Wastes. Try it like this. We can do a little better than that. So we Mulligan. Uh, still can't keep this one either. Go to five. Go to four. I'm going to go to three. All right. I'm going to put everything back except Tron Piece, Tron Piece, Maze Mind Tome. I'll put a Did Mulligan to six. They shock Agadim the Undercrypt. They thought seize me. Hopefully this means they didn't keep a hand with a combo. They kept a hand that was marginal with disruption. Okay. I have two Tron lands and a dream. And that dream is succeeding at the moment. We just have to draw a bomb in the next two draws. And this will have been a great mulligan to three. All right. Opponent plays Turn Timber, Serpentine Wood. They have Nature's Claim. Sad face. We drew the bomb, too. Ugh. All right, tower off the top. That's all we need. One time. Bunna plays out a Sword of the Meek. Okay. 
And a Seagate Reborn. Tower. Oh. Pass the turn. Close. I was actually statistically less likely to draw that than the tower. Opponent plays a Hagra Brood Pit. We untap. Draw Maze Mind Tome. Play Maze Mind Tome. Pass the turn. We have two Scries to try and hit tower in addition to our draw. Opponent plays another Agadim, the Undercrypt. They're going to Nature's Claim, so we get to Scry. Ancient Stirrings to the bottom. Claim down. We untap. We draw Veil of Summer. Pass the turn. They draw Talisman of Resilience. They only have one card in hand. Play O-Stone. Pass the turn. It's not like O-Stone really makes a difference. I guess we fog their, like, critical turn. Opponent is top decked only lands and decked with no lands. We untap. Okay. Now any Sphere, Star, Forest um, is a good top deck. Preferably a Sphere, I think. Alright, opponent's got it. We might actually survive a hit and have a chance at a draw to activate O-Stone because of double nature's claim. 4, 8, 12, 16. They only have three creeping chills. Um, so their last card in hand is probably a creeping chill unless they took one out. Is there a chance we survive this? So we were at 28. We go to 19. We get hit with uh, four Venge Vines. If we hit tower off the top, or uh, Sphere or Star. No, Sphere or Star doesn't do it. It'd have to be a, a tower. If we hit tower off the top, we can crack O-Stone and survive because of Double Nature's Claim. And if we hit tower and we crack O-Stone and blow up the world, I uh, believe my opponent mills out. Okay, here come the Venge Vines. It's possible that their last card in hand is Creeping Chill and that this doesn't really matter, but... I mean, technically it is correct to play this out, so... We'll take 16, go to 3, untap tower, play star. We could draw tower off of star, so... Yeah, that doesn't do it. Okay, well, it is because my opponent had two nature's claims that we lost, so we'll run it back for round 3. Alright, play first. Yep, this is... Pretty good chance at a turn three Karn, uh, unless my opponent starts exactly green source nature's claim. Um, or kills us on turn two, which is possible. But there's not much we could do about that. Alright, my opponent kept a hand of six, so start Urza's Mind Sphere. Pass the turn. If my opponent nature's claims this sphere, we at least have the opportunity to play a Maze Mind Tome. They could also Thought Seize our Sylvan Scrying. It looks like that's what's happening. Yep. We untap, we draw Ugin. Players is tower, play Maze Mind Tome. I don't think they can force us to shuffle, so I'm just gonna scry now. Sphere to the bottom. Pass the turn. I just wanna be able to F6 on my opponent's turn. <laughs> Alright, opponent plays a Seagate Reborn. Untapped, that's scary. Is this a Pentad Prism? It is. Okay, we untap. Scry on our upkeep. Looking for that power plant. There it is. Draw power plant. Play power plant. Play Karn. And away goes the Pentad Prism. Pass the turn. I... Ooh, Ugin does not say non-land permanent. If I minus seven Ugin, do I take out all of their lands? That is a that is something I need to test. Because dual-faced cards, the back face or the front face. Uh, CMC is what's considered for both sides. I need to find that out. Uh, so we're gonna... We're gonna crack Sphere for green first. Get a Worm Coil Engine. Draw an extra card. Alright, well, that was a weird noise, Porter. Scared me. We're gonna play Expedition Map, play Worm Coil Engine. And the question is, do I uptick or downtick? And I actually think I have to get rid of Karn here, because if I don't, we're in trouble. So we're gonna hit the Black Mana. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a turn timber. We untap. We are going to search for a forest. We're basically going to try an ancient stirrings into another Ugin. Or, uh, I mean, another Karn. Scry on our upkeep. Gain four life. Sanctum of Ugin to the bottom. Okay. Draw Karn, great creator. Play Karn, great creator. Down tick. Uh, and the game is over.
<laughs> all right, we beat oops all spells. Okay, I'm going to take a break from recording this, and I think I'm going to play in the modern challenge. I'm going to play my previous Tron list configuration, I think, so. All righty, round two. Hopefully we can do better than we did in the disastrous monster... <laughs> Mon ma what the fuck was it called? Modern Showcase Challenge. I was going to call it Monstrous something, and I'm like, that's definitely not right. Kano, what is wrong with you? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and I'm too lazy to edit that out, so everybody's going to see that embarrassing mistake. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, didn't do too good, unfortunately. Um, we had some bad matchups. Because uh, Green Tron's like matchups with the top metagame percentage is not great, so it probably wasn't the deck to play. But uh, for reasons espoused at the end of that video, uh, that's why I played the deck. Anyway, Modern Green Tron match two of this modern league, and we will be on the draw probably. All right, Mulligan six because one lander that's a forest is pretty much unkeepable. Um, yeah, we can do better at five. We'll keep... i to put back two cards. Uh, I kind of want to put back a power plant. And Ulamog. Alright, opponent starts Leyline of Sanctity. This might be another Oops All Spells list. In fact, that's the only deck I can think of that main decks Leyline of Sanctity. So let's see how fast their initial hand of seven is that they kept. Okay, and they start off... Emeria, the Shattered Skyclave, tapped. We start off as this power plant. I still want to see if minus sevening Ugin takes out their uh, permanents. Like, all of their permanents. Because their lands are technically seven mana cost uh, things. Okay, opponent plays a Talisman of Resilience. They might just have the God Hand here. I mean, the God Hand, as far as dealing with us, would be the God Hand. Okay, pass the turn. All right, they got an Undercity Informer, and the Spirit Guide to activate him. Okay. So versus this deck, we bring in Veil of Summer. And generally go down Ulamog, Worm Coil, and I'm trying to remember what the other card I drop is. It might be an Ugin, just because Ugin's so expensive. Oh, we want Wilt as well. What am I thinking? Um, in that case, we'll also drop... I think we drop Dismember. It can help in an Undercity Informer situation if my opponent doesn't have the mana to activate him, at which point they wouldn't play him. So it, the edge case is so small that it's basically non-existent. Um, I think I'm only going to run one Wilt. I'll try it like this. All right, we'll play first. Mine, Power Plant, couple redraws along the way. We're at seven. I think we can do better. I would call this better. Okay, we'll keep. I'm gonna put back Chromatic Sphere. Start Mind Map. Pass the turn. When it plays Agadim the Undercrypt, untapped. So they're probably gonna Thought Seize then. Hmm, Simeon Spirit Guide. So this is a Pentad Prism. Which is very bad news for us. That means they have a very fast hand. Okay, well we drew the tower, so play Chromatic Star. Crack Star for green. Ancient Stirrings. Uh, I'll take Karn, Great Creator. Pass the turn. So they gotta kill us this turn. Which is entirely possible. We're hoping it's Charbelcher, because Charbelcher we can beat. Balustrade Spy, we can't. Um, milled all four Venge Vines. They milled three Creeping Chills. All three Swords of the Meek and an Arc Amoeba. And then... Yeah, Salvage Titan. Okay. Well, they got us. Okay. I'll see you guys in round three. Okay, round three. Here we go. Okay, round three for real. <clears throat> um, yeah, that's a mulligan. So is that. So is that. Well, we're on the draw. I have to put back three cards. This hand isn't 
too terrible. We just need to draw another Tron piece that isn't Power Plant. The opponent starts Scalding Tarn. We draw Sylvan Scrying. Play Chromatic Star. That's the turn. We have two more draws of hitting a Tron land for turn three Tron. Ideally, we would hit some kind of land, though. Opponent gets a Raugrin Triome, which is indicative they might be the Jeskai list. Jeskai control list. Cleansing Wildfire. Alright, get a forest. We untap. Draw Sylvan Scrying. Crack for green. It's a forest. Sylvan Scrying. We'll get a Urza's Mine. Pass the turn. Okay, I'm gonna play a Flagstones of Trocare. We untap. We draw Karn, Great Creator. Play Urza's Mine. Play Chromatic Star. Crack it for green. Sylvan Scrying. We'll get a tower. Pass the turn. I really doubt that it would be good, but I wonder if we could play Explore in Tron. Probably not, because Explore is only good in decks that have a really high land count, and the current lists of Tron only run like 18 lands. Another Cleansing Wildfire. Alright, get a forest. Opponent plays a Scalding Tarn. We untap. Drawers is mine. Um, play Tower. Play Great Creator. We will Wish, which will expose Karn to Bolt or Helix. Um, from this position, I mean, I probably just take, like, Sundering Titan or Worm Coil. I'm going to take Worm Coil. That seems like it might actually be castable. Sundering Titan may have been better, especially because my opponent's already used two Wildfires, and um, we're still very close to assembling Tron. When it fetches up a Prairie Stream... Okay, they shock a land and pass. We draw Urza's Mine. They're going to Snapcaster, probably Lightning Helix Karn. Lightning Bolt if they have a two mana play that they want to be able to use. Okay. Play an Urza's Mine. Play Chromatic Sphere. Crack it for green. Draw another Worm Coil. Um, play an Expedition Map and we'll pass the turn. So we will assemble Tron, only about three turns late. Opponent untaps. They attack us for two. Okay. Play an island. Let's go get Power Plant. Untap. We draw Karn. Um, Karn, I think, is better here if it resolves than Worm Coil Engine. Our opponent can't quite burst us down. I mean, if my opponent has a cryptic here, that's bad, but... Plus, if we uh, tutor up a another um, tower, we can play double Worm Coil next turn. Logic Knot? Shark Typhoon. Okay. Opponent makes a 4-4 blue shark. Draws a card. Okay. Uptick Karn on my opponent's hand. Taking a path from them. Okay. So, we're going to go tutor up another tower. Pass the turn. If my opponent wildfires us, we can still play a Worm Coil Engine. I think they played a land. They're attacking us for six. Okay, we untap. Draw Forest. Down tick on the shark. Play Tower. Play Worm Coil. Play Worm Coil. Okay, Cryptic, they counter draw. They probably have a path for this Worm Coil then, which means we're in real trouble right now. Yep. Okay, get a Wastes. Opponent plays Jace the Mind Sculptor and Brainstorms. And we need something that ends the game basically immediately. So, um, Ulamog would be nice. Um,. Second Karn is kind of good. So I just hate the fact that they may have kept a counter spell. The ideal circumstance here is we just down tick on Jace, down tick on Snap. But if I don't up tick, they could have a counter spell and Karn may not resolve. At which point we have to go to two, or we have to let them untap with a Jace the Mind Sculptor. <sighs> Alright, well, down tick on Snapcaster, because that's the most immediate threat to us, I suppose. 
play a second Karn. I guess at least if this gets countered, we still have a Karn on board, but... Take out Jace. Play a forest, pass the turn. Opponent had a burn spell. So even if we if we had upticked, we would just lose. And they top deck a snapcaster for the burn spell. Alright. You got me. Okay, so my opponent does not have um Hmm. My opponent does not have that many counter spells other than cryptic. So but I guess we still want Veil. I also kind of want Weather the Storm. Um let's see. I'm gonna cut Ugin is not as important in this matchup, and I think Dismember is not either. Um, cut O-Stone, and not really sure what I should cut, because still, I'm still thinking I do want the Weather of the Storm. Maybe we only bring in two Veil of Summer instead of three. I mean, it's possible they have a lot of cheaper counter spells, and maybe I want all three of them, but... All right, first hand was a mulligan. This hand is a mulligan. My Tron luck is not working today, or yesterday. <laughs> Okay, this is very close to a reasonable Tron hand. I'm going to put back, um, I guess, uh, I think i got to put the bombs back. I didn't want to do that, but we're going to start Forest. Okay, opponent plays a Flooded Strand. We draw Karn. That's good. Sylvan Scrying. Let's go get a Mine. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Raugren Triome. Alright, they Cleansing Wildfire immediately. Play a Forest. Draw Chromatic Sphere. Players is mine. Crack Sphere for green. Draw Ulamog. Okay. Ulamog, not going to be super useful here. But it untaps. But it plays flagstones into Teferi. Okay, they down tick to draw. We untap. We draw a Maze Mine Tome. Players is Tower. Play Karn, Great Creator. Down tick. We'll grab Trinisphere. Pass the turn. So next turn we can sorcery speed a Veil of Summer to land a Trinisphere. I guess. Not a huge fan of that, but uh, kind of seems like what we gotta do here. Alright, we untap. We draw Expedition Map. Play Veil. If we could tutor for Tower, um, I would play Expedition Map and tutor for Tower and then play Trinisphere, but unfortunately because we have to tutor for uh, Power Plant, it only taps for two instead of three, which really sucks. Okay. Uptick, uh, uptick Karn to four. Play Trinisphere. Pass the turn. Okay, I'm gonna crack Scalding Tarn. It's a Hollowed Fountain untapped. Cycles a Shark Typhoon. X2. Okay. Opponent untaps, upticks to Fairy, plays a Snow Covered Mountain. It's Karn to 2. Plays Big to Fairy and upticks. So that's big deal for us. Um, okay, we draw Sylvan Scrying. So Sylvan Scrying will get Power Plant. That's right, Trinisphere. <laughs> oh man, we're gonna get him. Animate three ball. Go to combat. Kill to Fairy Time Raveler. <laughs> yeah, got him. All right. Play Maze Mind Tome. Oh. Oh no, okay. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know this, but apparently um, Trinisphere has the legacy artifact wording um, that's on Howling Mine as well. So a long time ago, depending on whether something was a mono artifact or a poly artifact, when the game started, uh, they would shut off if they got tapped. Their effects were just considered not active if they were tapped. Um, I wasn't around during that time, and I couldn't tell you the difference. Uh, one did, one did not. And um, apparently, Trinisphere is one of the artifacts from Darksteel uh, that carried over 
that verbiage, which is really interesting to me. I didn't know that because I don't read cards. So my opponent is not currently under the effects of Trinisphere, as we were not either. They can actually Lightning Bolt Trinisphere to kill it if they want to. But we got rid of one of their Planeswalkers, so I consider that a moral victory. Especially we're about to cast Ulabog, and I would consider that a victory. Okay. Opponent kills three ball. That makes sense to me. I play a Flagstones, sacking the tapped Flagstones. Getting a Prairie Stream. They go to combat. Attack Karn down to one. Which tells me they're not planning on bolting Karn. They are going to Cleansing Wildfire Urza's Power Plant. So we tutor up Power Plant. This still gives us the mana to cast Ulamog next turn, which is pretty sweet. The only way it wouldn't is if my opponent has um, another Cleansing Wildfire, which they do not. You know what? I will keep a second Ulamog. <laughs> that seems pretty good to me. Okay. Untap. Draw Ulamog. Play Power Plant. Cast Ulamog. Exile their threat and Teferi. Okay. Play Ulamog. Tick up Karn. Pass the turn. Okay, opponent flashes in Snapcaster Mage for a Lightning Helix, presumably to kill Karn. Okay. We're going to wait to scry until our opponent's end step because they could have Path. Okay, they play an Island. They play Teferi, Time Raveler. Are they going to bounce Ulamog? They're going to bounce Maze Mind Tome. So let's get a scry in while we can. Maze Mind Tome. I don't want a second one. Not right now. Okay. So they're passing. We untap. We draw wastes. Go to combat. They're going to cryptic tap. Okay. Go to second main. We can either play Maze Mind Tome and start drawing, or we can play another Ulamog and get an Exile trigger. And I honestly think drawing extra cards here is better. We could play a 7-drop, so we could play Karn Liberated if we drew him. Draw Sylvan Scrying. Go ahead and Sylvan Scrying. And let's get a Sanctum of Ugin. Play Sanctum. Pass the turn. Okay. Opponent untaps. Up ticks to fairy. Plays big to fairy. Tux Ulamog. Okay. They play Mystic Sanctuary. I assume they're going to put like Cryptic back on top. They could put Cleansing Wildfire on top if they've got a cantrip, and that would be terrible for us. Unless we can top deck whatever Tron land. Yeah, that might be what's happening. Okay. They put Cleansing Wildfire on top. They attack us for two. We go to 18. Um, untap. Upkeep. Let's scry. Let's try and manipulate this top deck. Sphere to the bottom. Draw Sphere. So play Wastes. Play Chromatic Sphere. My opponent counters this because they don't want us to draw <laughs> our Ulamog. But joke's on them. Uh, we're holding one. Cast Ulamog. Nuke the Planeswalkers. Sack Sanctum. And we're going to get... I mean, we could get the other Ulamog, which problem is we just can't cast it if we get... Uh, <sighs> Cleansing Wildfired. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lands, potentially. Yeah, we'll have seven lands. So we'll just get a Worm Coil Engine. Exile the Planeswalkers. They had trouble dealing with an Ulamog, so they might have trouble dealing with this one depending on what they top deck in their next draw plus Cleansing Wildfire draw. Okay, a Cleansing Wildfire. We get a Forest. Honestly, that fifth basic seems to really help. Because, like, Cleansing Wildfire loops... Um, if, they keep, if they keep casting Ghost... Or if they keep casting Cleansing Wildfire or they keep Ghost Quartering you... Um, the, like, threshold for what you can cast is number of basics plus, uh, um, like, lands played. 
So generally, if you have four basics, they're going to keep you on five or six, I think. Um, five lets you get to one more, potentially. Okay, we draw an Ugin. Go to combat. Let's go ahead and attack our opponent. Exile the top 20 cards of their deck. Okay, Moto struggled with that a lot. We exiled Nexus of Fate. It's kind of interesting. When it doesn't block, just takes it. Okay. Play Worm Coil. Opponent remands a Worm Coil. Okay. Well, I'm glad we didn't... Um... Worm Coil pre-combat, because my opponent would have been able to draw something they put back on top, which they may or may not have wanted to do, but it was something they had the chance to manipulate, so. Opponent is going to Fate Seal us. I mean, we just need a land to resolve Ugin. They're going to have to deal with Ulamog or they just die. They attack us for two, we go to 16. Um, Tower is fine. We just need to draw any land, actually. Okay, go to combat. Okay, opponent paths, Ulamog, shuffle, second main, play a land. Play Ugin. Cast Force of Negation, sure. Opponent untaps and draws. They fate seal us. If they leave it on top, we'll scry, or actually we'll just draw an extra card. So, okay, opponent attacks us for two. Take two. We untap. Draw Expedition Map. Play Worm Coil. I mean, they can just Jace down tick if they have nothing else, right? But that prevents them from manipulating our top deck. Okay, opponent untaps. Draws a card. Bounces Worm Coil. Okay, they go to combat. Attack us for two. We go to 12. Activate Maze Mind Tome, draw a card, gain four life. We get a Thought Knots here, okay. That's something. That's something that if they answer it, it actually mills them, which is kind of funny. So play Power Plant, because we just drew that. Play Thought Knot. If they have a counter spell, they're going to counter this. <laughs> this is making a big shark. I feel like this might just be a big shark. Or it's a huge logic knot. <laughs> It'd be really funny. Alright, that's a problem. Opponent makes a massive shark. Puts us on a two-turn clock. They have Bolt and Helix. So we'll take Helix. Play Worm Coil. Play Map. Pass the turn. <clears throat> so our opponent will unsummon Worm Coil again. And we have to top deck an answer to that shark or we die. Yep. This is the bad thing about Worm Coil versus Thrag Tusk is situations like where you need the life gain immediately and it doesn't get to attack. Because like if our opponent was unsummoning a Thrag Tusk here, they'd just be losing. Okay, opponent plays a Flooded Strand. So, end step, let's thin our deck. Um, Blast Zone doesn't help. I guess we'll just get another tower. Untap. We draw. Mine. Alright, we concede. That is unfortunate. All right, well, I'm going to restart the client, and then uh, I'll come back for round four. All right, round four, here we go. Um, yeah, we'll mulligan that. Mulligan this as well. One to four. One to three. Okay. Don't like that. <clears throat> yeah, I uh, don't know why. Because for, like, three leagues in a row, anytime we mulligan to, like, th like, four or five, we were getting, like, the ideal four or five. And now it's like we're going all the way down to three frequently, and we're still not seeing what we want. <sighs> okay, opponent uh, is definitely, like, Luris Burn or Luris Shadow. They take Expedition Map, because it's the only thing they can take. Okay, well, play Power Plant. We top deck the mine anyway, which all, all that means is we would have turn three Tron even on a three three card hand if our opponent hadn't had a Thought Seize or an Inquisition. Okay, so they play Blood Crypt, Seal of Fire, and a Death Shadow. We draw another Power Plant. Players is mine. This is really scare them here. <laughs> yeah, make them think that Tron's always got it. Maybe we can tilt them a little bit, and they'll play suboptimally, and somehow we can take advantage of this. I don't know. Opponent seal fires themselves, attacks us for three. We go to 17. 
They have Scourge of the Skyclaves, now they can play it. And they do. Yep, don't like that. We draw Expedition Map. Play Power Plant, play Expedition Map. Tutor up Tower. Now if we can top deck an Ugin, or an Ulamog, this game's over. <laughs> oh man, we still assembled Tron on a mulligan to three. Uh, we might be dead though. Uh, if my opponent has Battle Rage, uh, we are super screwed because the first strike turning Scourge of the Skyclaves massive enough to kill us is horrible. So we need Ugin, Ulamog, or O-Stone. We put uh, Luris in their hand. An O-Stone would only be a temporary solution. Uh, Karn doesn't do it, I don't think. If my opponent can lose two more life, Shadow kills us. But... We got there, that's the turn four Tron Karn on a Mulda 3, that's not bad. <laughs> that's really not bad. Um, so thank you Tron Gods for uh, letting me top deck what I kind of needed there. If my opponent has to take a turn off of attacking us... Nope, they're gonna... Yep, okay, cool. I mean, the odds that they can lose life next turn and uh, have a shadow is guaranteed because they can play uh, Luris and get back Seal of Fire here. Okay, they play Death Shadow. Okay, we need... It's gotta be Ulamog or Ugin or O-Stone. That's a 5 out of 52 chance. It's approximately a 1 in 10. Closer to like a 1 in 11, I think. No, it's close to a 1 in 10. Unfortunately, we didn't get it. That was still impressive, though. <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna bring in Veil of Summer. Um, and I think that's it. We're gonna drop... Uh, Ulamog. The Thought Not Seers are just outclassed. Like, it gives us a way to interact with our opponent's hand and their cheaper threats. So, like, I don't want to take them out versus Death Shadow. The problem is, Death Shadow is a pile of removal that gets rid of Thought Not Seer, and their creatures are one fourth the mana cost and twice the size. <laughs> uh, which just makes me feel like I'm getting a terrible rate, you know? Um,. I'll cut O-Stone, I'll cut a Thought Knot, and we'll try it like that. Uh, well, hopefully we don't have to mulligan to three. I'm getting real tired of doing that. Um, we can we can do better. This is better. We will keep, put back a Sphere, and being on the play allows us to play Expedition Map. If this was on the draw, I would probably, I'd probably still keep this hand, but I would lose with this hand because my opponent would just Inquisition my Expedition Map away, and then... We'd be really sad. If they have Inquisition and not Thought Seize, they're not gonna be take they're not gonna be able to take anything of real value from us. But if they have Thought Seize, they can take away Karn or they can take away Ugin. It's a Thought Seize. Alright. They kept a handful of baubles. Okay. We draw Ulamog, players as tower. Crack expedition map, we'll get mine. Pass the turn. Unfortunately we don't have a seven mana play, we have an eight mana play. But fortunately for us, if we ever resolve Ugin, we're in a really good spot. Because we can just down tick to permanently deal with any uh, threats that they have. They play Polluted Delta. Crack Polluted Delta. Get a Blood Crypt untapped down to 12. Thought Seize again. So they're going to take Ugin. They could take Star. And they just be like, oh, we need to limit his draws so we can't get to Tron. But you should never do that because Tron top decks amazingly. <laughs> Uh, you should get rid of the threats at hand if you are in this position that my opponent is in. Like if I were my opponent, I would Thought Seize and take Ugin. Opponent identifies the same line we did. Okay, they play Shadow, we untap. Draw Maze Mind Tome. So, players is mine. Uh, play Star, crack up a green. Draw Waste, play Maze Mind Tome. Draw a card. Card. Okay, well, that's something to play next turn. And we do have a land we can play. If we top deck a tower, we can play Ulamog, which would also be really good. Oh, no. Plays Polluted Delta, cracks Polluted Delta, shocks Blood Crypt, so that their Death Shadow is now a 6-6. Six, six. <sighs> and it is our eternal nemesis, Blood Moon, um, which I didn't really suspect. No. Maze Mind Tome, putting Maze Mind Tome on top. Draw Maze Mind Tome, play Wastes. Play Maze Mind Tome. Draw a card. Another Karn. Pass the turn. Uh, we did not leave O-Stone in the deck, which is quite disheartening. I really didn't suspect Blood Moon, and maybe I should have. 
Uh, Seal of Fire. They did put... I think they put Luris in their hand. No, they took Luris out of the companion zone because they're playing three mana permanents now. They Seal of Fire themselves to limit our options here. Um, I don't know what we need to draw here. We gotta draw something this turn. It might be that Singleton Thought Knots here. That might be the only thing that remotely gets us out of the situation. Why would you do that? Why under Blood Moon would you give me access to colored mana? Okay, well, um, Scry on our upkeep. Karn to the bottom. Scry on our upkeep. Map to the bottom. Opponent looks at the top card of our deck like... <laughs> okay, so if I were my opponent and I was going to Cleansing Wildfire me, I would have hit the Wastes. Um, because that's atypical for Tron to run. And I could have something like a Thought Knots here to block. Which, it's possible they don't have, like, they just had an answer for, like, a Fatal Push or whatever. But, opponent was locked on only red mana, so. But if I was my opponent, I also wouldn't have cast Cleansing Wildfire there. <laughs> like, his four colorless mana. It, you could play a Walking Ballista on, turn, on, on two. Like, there's not much that he could have post-sideboard. Like, my opponent could have Cleansing Wildfire us into green mana, at which point we could, like, Nature's Claim or Wilt and then actually do something. Um, which they don't know. I could have something like that in my hand and then just top deck the tower like we did and then play Karn. Like, <laughs> I, I think that was a mistake, but unfortunately we were not in a position to punish them. Okay, round five. Uh, we won the die roll, so we get to play first. This hand does not look that bad. I'm actually going to keep this. Start Urza's Mind, Chromatic Star. Pass the turn. Wanna plays a Temple Garden untapped Arbor Elf. Feel like this is Heliod Company. We untap, draw Expedition Map. Crack Star for green, draw a card. It's a Power Plant. Play Power Plant. Play Star. Crack Star for green. Ugin. Play Expedition Map. Pass the turn. Alright, I feel pretty comfortable. Opponent Utopia Sprawls. On white. Taps for green-white. Green-white. It is Heliod Company. Well, we gotta hope that Thought Knot Seer is gonna be enough. Yeah, play Tower. Thought Knot Seer. Walking Ballista, Skyclave Apparition. So take Walking Ballista. Pass the turn. <clears throat> so Thought Knot Seer was really good right there. Okay, when it cracks, Windswept Teeth. Ends their deck to get a Plains, a Ladomri's Call. Are we just dead? They can play Ballista on two, but they can't give it lifelink this turn. They might just Skyclave Apparition here, which I think is what I would do. They're thinking about it. Because Ballista has to have two counters for the combo to go off. They can't play him on one and give him lifelink. He just dies when you remove a counter. Well, they're still going to play Ballista. Okay. Okay. Crack map. We're going to get Sanctum of Ugin. Untap. We draw Maze Mind Tome. Play Sanctum of Ugin. Go to combat. Attack our opponent for four. They're not going to block, obviously. They go to 12. Play Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Sack Sanctum. Get Ulamog. Ugin resolves. Minus three. Pass the turn. So my opponent happened to play a creature that survives this. Uh, board wipe. They can attack and sack Ballista to deal with Ugin, but then they don't really have a lot. So opponent Skyclave Apparitions. They get to draw a card, so we know nothing about their hand. They play Giver of Runes. They attack. We untap. Play a tower. Uptick Ugin. Walking Ballista. Okay. They ping Ugin. The Ping Ugin. Play Ulamog. We'll nuke their green sources. <laughs> they could have a path, but um, this takes them off of the most action. And if they could do anything, we would just Ugin and deal with it. So, Spatial Contortion in. Um, Wilt in, I think. And we're going to go down... Um, I guess Wormcoil Engine, 
and one Ulamog. Maybe I'll just bring in one Wilt. Okay, we'll try it like this. So Thought Knots here showed very nicely there. All right, Natural Tron map and Dismember, sure. Okay. Wanna play the planes into Giver of Runes. At least it's not mana acceleration. Players is mine, map. Pass. I'm gonna play as a Conclave Mentor. We draw a Thought Knot Seer. Play Power Plant. Um, I think I just have to blow Dismember now. Okay. If they play Walking Ballista, um, hopefully we can Thought Knot Seer and nab something from them. Heliod is the harder of the two pieces for us to interact with, I think. Okay. And it apparently does not have very much going on in their hand right now. They hit us for two. We untap. Draw Ancient Stirrings. Play Tower. Play Thought Knot. Take a look at their hand. Walking Ballista Planes. Take Walking Ballista. Play another map. Track map. And we're going to get a forest. Pass the turn. So opponent is holding a land. <laughs> uh, one unknown. They top deck Heliod. Wow. All right, they play planes. We untap, draw a power plant, play forest, ancient stirrings, looking for a Karn. Karn liberated, rest of the bottom. Play Karn. New Heliod. They give a creature lifelink, no attacks. Play a land. Do nothing. I mean, they could still jank us out with like a company or something like that, but draw a blast zone. Up to Karn on ourself. Taken ours is mine. Go to combat. Attack for four. And it goes down to 14. Play blast zone. Pass the turn. Go to cracks, windswept teeth to thin their deck. Gets a temple garden tapped. Untaps. They go to combat, attack us, or attack Karn for two, sure. They're holding a card in hand. Um, we're gonna put uh, Blast Zone on two, I think. Crack map, we'll get a tower. Untap. Draw Chromatic Sphere, so play Chromatic Sphere. Crack it for green. Draw Karn, great creator. Play Great Creator, and opponent scoops it up. All right, well, we went two and three. Um, honestly, I was like, I really don't want to have Thoughts Not Seer in this deck at any point. And then it won us round five. <laughs> so uh, I think it deserves a little bit more respect than I was giving it. Um, some thoughts, though. I think I think if I was going to play Thought Not Seer in this deck, um, I want to get rid of uh, Maze Mind Tomes because I, I think the Wastes is necessary if you're going to play Thought Knots here. I think the fifth basic is actually really nice versus Ghost Quarter, Cleansing Wildfire, Field of Ruin, Shenanigans. Because um, it gives you a whole extra turn before they start strip mining you, which is a big deal. Uh, I think I would cut to like one Maze Mind Tome to play more Thought Knots here if I was going to play this configuration. I haven't decided on whether or not that's something I like. I do like having the accessibility of Worm Coil Engine in the sideboard. Um, it could very well be a Batter Skull or a Sky Sovereign, uh, because then if we didn't have Tron, you could like play Karn on turn four, wish for it, and play it on turn five if you're just playing lands or you're under the Ghost Quarter Lock. In fact, I think that's probably ideal, uh, and I think it's... I don't know which one it's better as, but if I had to guess, I would imagine Sky Sovereign is slightly better. Um... Though if you're not willing to give up the life gain or you're in super heavy aggro meta where like your life total is always like three or five by the turn like turn four mark, um, you probably would want Batter Skull. But uh, Thought Nuts here, yeah, deserves more respect than I thought it did because I was like, oh yeah, this is way better in the blue version where you can like selectively counter things. Um, 
but it gives us some game versus the combo decks, as you saw versus Heliod Com Company. Uh, it's another cheap threat that we can play if we're constantly kept off of Tron, like we have been. Uh, basically every single game of the modern showcase when I was playing, and uh, most of the games we were playing here, we just didn't draw it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to think more on this, and I might edit this list some more, but I, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this content as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, if you did, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined, and remember, I stream Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. Uh, same username over there as you find me on here, and I hope to see you guys there. And uh, thank you for watching. It means a lot to me. We're uh, channel's still growing, which is exciting. <sighs> All right, well, I've rambled enough. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.